31 trees in England assess damages in disaster areas in the aftermath of floods. A city volunteer overcomes her illness to care for care recipients wholeheartedly. Welcome to the Headlines. I'm Sibri Su. Thank you for joining us. Storm Dennis has devastated United Kingdom, causing floods in many places. A city volunteer couple went to two disaster areas to document the scenes as well as assessing damages. They plan to provide the necessary help to the affected residents. Let's take a look. It's flooded right over the Worcester race course over there. Both sides of the river flooded at the moment. And we don't know whether it's going to go up or down. There's more rain forecast, so it might come back up and flood even more. Storm Dennis has swept through the United Kingdom, devastating the southeast region. Worcester has been submerged in flood water for five days. The sports club and University of Worcester have also been flooded. The elevated railways that crosses River Severn have also been closed temporarily. It's difficult to see what's what, where the road is, where the race course is, where the river starts and ends, because it's all flooded. In temporary wells near Worcester, the flood water has receded and the city gradually restored its former look. The residents are cautious as they still place sandbags in front of the doors. And the thing is, you clean that floor once, you have to clean it again. And I mean, that's been cleaned how many times? Five, six, seven? You think you've got it clean, and when it's wet, it looks clean, and when it dries, it isn't clean. On the low lying Church Street, the flood water was once up to one's waist. In the graveyard, the tombstones have fallen over. A city volunteer couple are documenting the scenes as well as assessing damages so they can plan to provide the needed help. The Indonesian Dentist Association joined hands with Tima for a free dental clinic to celebrate its 70th anniversary. They treated the students from elementary school in Bogor. Many children are afraid of seeing the dentist, so the organizer asked the parents or teachers to accompany the children. Children are not afraid of the dentist, but the tools in the dentist's hand. The Indonesia Dentist Association works with the team to hold a free clinic at Ahmadiyya Elementary School in Boko. To lessen the children's fear, medical staff, parents, and teachers must cooperate. I'm very happy we hardly go see the dentist. Because we've seen many children cry in the dental clinic, we don't have the heart to bring her there. But earlier the teacher was with her, so my kid was willing to be treated. We are responsible for treating students from grade 3 to 6 on this day. Many of them need dental filling or have their teeth removed, so it was scary to them. And their parents didn't have the heart to let them do it. And we couldn't force the children to do it. 225 students go to see the dentist, and the majority of them still faces it bravely. It was probably I ate too many candies and chocolates. Thank you for filling my teeth. I don't have any toothache now. The children must learn to care for their teeth at young age so they can keep their teeth healthy. As people fight the coronavirus epidemic, the medical staff and hospitals have been stressed out. Fujian City volunteers have asked some vegetarian restaurant chefs to start working early and cook for medical staff at 13 hospitals. For seven days, city volunteers provided these lunches for the medical staff. One nurse cried while receiving the food, saying that she's not just eating food, but feeling people's love and care. <laughs> Still frying the food ingredients, the restaurant staff has started working a week ahead of the other restaurants in this critical period. We come to work without a second thought. Normally, this is not a good time to resume working. However, we think the manager's decision is very good. We've returned to work and we are willing to do this. It turns out that what they're cooking are lunches for staff at 13 hospitals in Xiamen and Fuzhou. 
We've added celery and wax gourd to the vegetable soup base. Nuts have a lot of energy. We've combined them. In addition, the fragrant rice is very pure and it is aromatic. The chefs cook three dishes in the soup every day, hoping that the medical staff will feel warm in their heart and stomach. Thick soup is starchy and it maintains the temperature. As the customer drinks it, maintains the temperature unlike most soups that turn cold. So we choose to cook seven-colored thick soup for everyone. We feel very pleased that we can contribute this way because we all wear white uniforms as chefs. Maybe we can only cook meals for our angels in white. In fact, we are quite happy to do so. Fujian City volunteers have initiated this meal service. While the chefs cook food, city volunteers will deliver them working as a team. When I first heard about this task, I was a bit worried. However, later I thought the medical staff is not afraid, so we should not be worried. Compared to the angels in white, we are just doing a small favor. This labor work is nothing. A box meal and a jinsu efforts, and they've come with volunteers' best wishes. You're not afraid of the dangers and you've worked hard. Compared to many people who stay home, you still hang out and endure much. This is really difficult work. Upon hearing about it, I feel deeply touched. Excuse me. For seven consecutive days, the 3,070 box meals have warmed up the medical staff's stomach and heart. To reduce the chance of a coronavirus transmission, hospitals have implemented various control measures. After city volunteer Lin Sijia retired from Taipei City Hospital, he continues to guard the hospital as a volunteer. Every day he will stand at the hospital entrance for four hours to assist people in preparing for epidemic prevention. Greeting the people arriving at the hospital, Chief Chief Volunteer Lin Zijia has an important task, that is, to assist the medical team in guarding the main entrance of the hospital for epidemic prevention. You need to respect the people without wearing a mask because he is not intended to do that. So it is important to speak with a good manner. If you don't blame him and make him feel stressed, he won't reject you. We have these volunteers in the hospital to stand at the front line with us. Apart from patients and their families who feel warm, in fact, we also feel very warm when seeing them staying with us. I'm grateful to them. It may be frightening for a normal person to accompany a patient with suspected fever to undergo further examination. But for brother Lin Jijia, who has rich experience in serving in the hospital, knows how to protect himself and hence is the best partner of the medical team. Like the clothes I wear, I must change it after I return home. I will wash it too. If not, I will hang it in the balcony and wear it the next day. Like the jacket, I won't wash it every day. For the mask, I will discard it after I leave the hospital and wear another mask at home. Anyway, I will separate them clearly. Using hand sanitizer, measuring body temperature, and wearing masks are the measures to reduce the chance of disease transmission. However, with the daily epidemic development, the relationship between doctors and patients has become a little tight. Lin Jijia's stable and soft attitude is a reassurance for everyone at the moment of epidemic prevention.
City volunteer Zen Mei Hui says that seeing the progress of care recipients makes her so happy that she's even smiling when she sleeps. Zen, who's battling cancer, has dedicated herself to helping care recipients. In fact, she even went bold because of chemotherapy treatments, but she has never stopped caring for others. To motivate someone is not as simple as you think. If they pay attention to us, we have succeeded. You don't feel it without you doing it. If you do it, you'll feel it. You'll see them grow and I often say that you'll even laugh when you're sleeping. <laughs> Because you are at home, you will always think that I'm sick or that you are a patient. Often say that the disease scares you and that you are not really that sick to the point of death, but you have a fear of death. You are simply afraid of dying. When we started coming here, there were about 450 people, but now there are about 150 people on the list because they have almost all lost touch. After we come in, sometimes we see uncle and just asking some simple questions like, do you grow vegetables, flowers? He will coldly say yes. He would say that he was planting vegetables and flowers and just waiting for death. This made me very sad. when we came in, we would often bring uncle to join some activities. And after joining, he began to accept us, and our love was soon spread to him. Taiwanese songs are easy to learn. It's easy. You just need to hear it. For example, if I like a song, I will listen to it five times, and then I will know it. I'm more likely to think about someone who may be difficult. These are the people I'm interested in would like to contact more. When I think of this person as, why is he like this? Why did he become like this today? I would love to explore these thoughts. So I thought about what method I can use to change this person's thinking. <laughs> Fruits have high nutritional value. In particular, guava is rich in dietary fiber and vitamin C. Some people believe that eating guava can reduce blood sugar levels. Is this true? Let's find out in our next report. Colorful fruits contain various nutrients, for example, vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals, which are the most essential nutrients for human body. But can fruits alone cure diseases? I heard that guava can lower blood sugar, right? Guava is good. People with high blood sugar can also eat it. Among the fruits, the amount of dietary fiber in guava is the highest. Guava is also rich in nutrients such as vitamin C, potassium, quercetin, and polyphenols, and is well received by many people. The dietary fiber can help promote our gastrointestinal movement, which is effective in ingestion. Vitamin C, quercetin, and polyphenols can increase antioxidants in our body. Potassium can help regulate our blood pressure. So, can guava really lower sugar in blood? 
Doctor said that guava is a fruit with a low glycemic index. After eating it, blood sugar will rise slowly, but it cannot lower blood sugar. In Chinese medicine, guava is known as an acerbic fruit with convergence ability. So it may be helpful for those people who get diarrhea easily. But as a fruit is often too sweet to control blood sugar level after eating, blood sugar will rise instead. To control blood sugar, apart from reducing sugar intake, the order of what food you eat is also a key factor. It's better to eat protein first because the blood glucose will increase slowly after eating it. After 15 minutes when you consume rice, the control of blood glucose will then be relatively mild and effective. Therefore, fruit meals do not have slimming effects, but vice versa. Doctors remind the public that eating three meals a day is very important. Only in keeping a balanced diet is a smart way to keep healthy. According to statistics, 60 to 70 percent of people in Taiwan take stomach medicine for a long time to suppress discomfort. Doctors remind patients with gastro reflux disease that their discomfort may not be caused by gastric acid. For this reason, Far Eastern Memorial Hospital launched a special clinic to help patients find the cause of their problem. Here's more. As long as one has gastro reflux, the treatment may be taking medicine, such as liquids, to inhibit gastric acid. But statistics found that 30 percent of patients with gastro reflux were not caused by gastric acid. It may be a problem of peristalsis in the esophagus itself. That is, it could be a functional abnormality, and sometimes it is not a problem with stomach acid. It may be air going the wrong way on an alkaline substance, such as bile coming up. Local people who often have stomach ache are in the habit of taking stomach medicine. But if they have cardiovascular or chronic diseases, the medicine they take can easily trigger drug interactions and reduce the efficacy of the drug. For example, if the elderly take such medication for more than five years, it could loosen bones and even lead to a cough, which may cause pneumonia. Therefore, Far Eastern Hospital has launched a special clinic to accurately detect gastro reflux. The first is peristaltic, which is the pressure difference of peristalsis. The second is the pH, that is, when this peristalsis is moving, is it acid or alkali? The third is an impedance, whether the impedance is a liquid, solid, or gas. There is a large group, such as those who snore. What is coming up is actually air. Patients do not need anesthesia as long as the catheter is inserted from the nostril into the esophagus and stomach. Within 15 minutes, you can detect esophageal peristalsis. 24-hour gastric pH monitoring can also find out the main cause of gastro reflux and prescribe the right medicine. It can also prevent patients from going to the clinic for medicine that simply doesn't work. The pipe organ is known as the aristocrat of musical instruments. There are currently more than 40 pipe organs in Taiwan. About half of them are maintained by Zhang Chaoren, who has more than 40 years of experience. Each pipe organ is handmade, and some are built to fit church buildings. Therefore, both building and tuning the pipe organ is a, is a big challenge. Let's meet the man who takes up this challenge. The instrument Zhang Zhaoren will repair today is this giant organ. <laughs> Climbing up and down, dismantling and dismantling, sometimes a bass tube can weigh up to 100 kilograms. Although it can produce an amazingly grand sound, the repair process can be more troublesome than dismantling a small house. Removing sound pipes need to be done one by one, remove dust, polishing the whole pipe, adjusting and tuning and repair. Then it needs to be put back. The heaviest pipe weighs hundreds of kilograms. Maintenance is the hardest in the summer because air conditioning can't be used because it will affect tuning, meaning even fans cannot be turned on. The first organ pipe will be two to three stories high. Some pipes we need to climb up if we are going to repair it. So this is very dangerous work, and sometimes we even need to hang on the outside. The 
organ has an indispensable position in Western religion, especially in Catholic Mass. The structure of the organ is directly attached to the building structure, so it is often built at the same time as the church and the opera house. A few domestic masters assemble and repair pipe organs. This one has 4,172 pipes with a length of 14 meters at the National Concert Hall. It was also involved in the assembly. It took two years to complete the work from production to installation. The work is tedious and long, but he is happy. I like it very much. I like it from my bones to my cells. It's a mechanical thing that just talks to me. It's a special ability that God gave me. Zhang Zhaoren did not study music, but after retiring from the military, he wanted to learn a skill. He's from Pingdong, but came up to Taipei to learn tuning and became the first local in Taiwan to participate in organ production. Our teacher had a special school case. He has an organ sent to Taiwan and he needed to send an assistant. Our teacher will send me there. Since then, many churches have ordered organs from abroad and have asked him to assemble them, as well as take over maintenance. Zhang Zhaoren's name in Taiwan is nearly always associated with organs. At the age of 19, I work on my first organ, and now I'm 61 or 62. So how many years is that? About 42 years. There are currently only 43 organs in Taiwan, and they will not need to be repaired all the time. The market is very limited. Usually his team focuses on tuning pianos and selling antique pianos. Repairing the organ means one needs to be like a nomad as you have to travel to fix organs. This life may be too hard for ordinary people and it takes nearly a decade to learn how to assemble and tune an organ. We have very little history with this instrument, as the organ hasn't been deeply involved in our local culture. Also, foreign countries may not be willing to help us in this area. As a nomadic organ tuner, Mr. Zhang has accepted the difficult and challenging life of fixing these multi-story behemoths. Fortunately, he finds this work rewarding, and many of us thank him. City volunteers in Lesotho have held a blessing ceremony. During the ceremony, city volunteers pass on uniforms to volunteers in training. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>